cruise news time, and I feel a very passionate episode coming on today. One of my most sentimental cruise ports, getting some loving. My favorite cruise ship of all time, getting some loving. And I think one of the most underserved segment of the cruising population, solo cruisers, getting some loving. Uh, look, cruise news and my views. Let's get it on. I, Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. That's right. It is for your face today. I've got three cruise news stories. And then I'm going to give you an update about my visit to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. And while that may be the doctor that I love the most right now, I didn't get a great report on my thyroid, though. So I'll share that after the cruise news. Cruise news story number one. Let's talk about the cruise port there in Mobile, Alabama. You may or may not know, but it is because of that cruise port in Mobile, Alabama, one of the contributing factors to you getting the show today. One of the contributing factors to me being a cruiser, that was my very first cruise port. And they've had an interesting relationship with cruising in Mobile. I've gone through these seasons there in Mobile, uncertain whether or not cruising would continue from there. But recently an agreement was struck where Carnival Cruise Line would place the Carnival Spirit cruise ship there for six months out of the year. And they signed a five-year contract. And as a part of that agreement, the city of Mobile investing $2.1 million to provide improvements to the gangway there. They've got the terminal all looking spiffy for the very first cruise on the Carnival Spirit this season, starting on Friday. And well, I've watched a few news reports from the folks down there in Mobile, and they are dang excited. Fun place to cruise out of. You get to go down to the Western Caribbean for the most part. If you look at the whole Gulf Coast, like if you start Tampa and you make your way around the Panhandle and you hit Mobile and you got New Orleans and then you go south into Texas to Galveston, you have this whole pocket of cruisers that live along that Gulf area. And Mobile certainly provides a great place for people in Southern Mississippi and Alabama, Southern Georgia, the Panhandle of Florida, gives them a nice option for places to cruise out of. Again, it's a sentimental cruise port for me, and that's why I wanna give them some love today. Congratulations, Mobile, on getting your cruising restarted for the next six months on the Carnival Spirit. Uh, we can't wait to see what else happens there. There's some speculation that these improvements to the gangway might actually entice other cruise lines to go out of Mobile, which would be a boon also. Have you ever cruised out of Mobile, Alabama? If you want to put in the comments what your favorite embarkation port is, you could do that too. I think mine still is Port Canaveral and starting to be New York City because the sailaways there are fantastic. But uh, yeah, what's your favorite cruise port? Been out of Mobile? Leave a comment below. Let's get it on. My favorite cruise ship continues to be Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas. I fell in love with her back in December of 2018 when I went on her and uh, she continues to hold a significant place in my heart when it comes to cruise ships. And while she's had a little bit of a propulsion issue, Oasis of the Seas departed Cape Liberty back on October the 1st with an itinerary that was taking her south. And one of her first ports of call was Port Canaveral. It's interesting, right? That popular embarkation port is also a port of call. Unfortunately, guests were informed that because of an issue, an electrical issue in one of the pods, that they would be one hour late into Port Canaveral, shortening their day in Port Canaveral. But the fortunate news is the electrical issue has been repaired and the rest of the itinerary for the Oasis of the Seas is unaffected. They left Port Canaveral yesterday. They went down to the perfect day at Coco Cay. Lovely day, lovely day at Coco Cay. That's such an earworm that the, if you ever go on one of these royal ships and you're going there, they play that song like in the morning and you just spend the whole day. Going, bless them. Bless them for that earworm. Echo, okay. Oasis of the Sea seems to have gotten the repair love that she needed. She seems satisfied and now she's... Uh, now she's good to go. Now, I gotta tell you about the love, baby. The love that is coming the way of solo cruisers. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in Karoo, 
using, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Come on, show your boy T some love. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell. Thank you in advance. I love you. How about that? I love you. All right, here's the big, big story. Norwegian Cruise Line is announcing that they're doubling their solo cabins, adding 1,000 solo cabins across their fleet of 19 cruise ships. This is significant because if you are a solo cruiser or if you've ever cruised solo, you know that most of the time you're not treated any differently. You're just treated like a person that doesn't have a cabin mate. And so if you're booking a regular cabin, you get hit, you get hit with what's called the solo supplement, and you almost have to pay double for your cruises. Now, fortunately, you get out of, you don't have to pay double gratuity, and you don't have to pay double port fees, but you still have to pay more because you didn't have anybody to cruise with. That's a bummer. Norwegian Cruise Line has been doing a great job of providing solo cabins in what's known as their solo studio. This is a ship within a ship where all of the solos are put together in these small 100 100 square foot cabins. I stayed in one for a week. It, you know, it doesn't have any access to the outside. Again, ship within a ship. They're all interior cabins. You got your own solo lounge. That aspect of it's nice, but you're you're stuck in an interior cabin. And I know for many, the only option of choosing an inside cabin is a turnoff. You don't feel any love there, but the love is coming because in this new 1,000 cabin allocation, there will be not only those interior solo studio cabins, but there will also be ocean view cabins and and wait for this, wait for the, wait for the climax here. And they're going to have solo balcony cabins with no penalty. <laughs> that That is the height of solo cruising that you're not regulated to a closet sized interior that you can actually get yourself a solo balcony. Uh, there's other cruise lines that have solo balconies. I cruised on a solo balcony on Royal Caribbean, but no other cruise line, in my opinion, focuses more on providing a good solo experience than Norwegian Cruise Line. And again, one of the only challenges is that you were regulated to these interior cabins. Well, no. Today, the floodgates of love are open and you will now have options beyond those interior cabins. And the cool thing is even if you get a solo balcony that's not connected to that solo studio area where you have the solo lounge, you'll still get access to the solo lounge. So they're still holding that whole solo program together to give solos access to all of those amenities. <sighs> Whew. I feel like I need a, a smoke. Let me tell you about the uh, love or lack of love I got yesterday at Ear, Nose and Throat. First and foremost, I was so excited to go to Ear, Nose and Throat because the biggest challenges I have in my life, I have trouble breathing through my nose. If you've ever watched one of my videos where I'm walking around, a lot of times when I'm talking and using my mouth, which is the main way that I breathe, you can hear the air trying to get up through my nose and uh, it's, it's noticeable. And so I'd never seen anybody about that. I didn't even know that there was an ear nose. It's funny, right? I'm 50 years old. I didn't really understand the concept of an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And then also sometimes I have pressure in my ears. I feel like I've lost some hearing. I listened to a lot of loud music when I was a kid, all that stuff. And then I've got this massive thyroid issue. And while this doctor could speak to all of those things, we got there at the doctor yesterday. They received my latest ultra scan of my ever increasing, growing thyroid. This has been about a two year process. I went for the first ultrasound over a year ago. I had to get a biopsy. They took a biopsy of 28 nodules. They found them all to be benign. Uh, but at that time, my doctor said, well, let's just watch it for a year and see what happens. Well, we watched it for a year and apparently it continues to grow. And it's grown to the point where I got some unexpected news at ear, nose and throat yesterday. The doctor said, I looked at your scan and your thyroid is massive and you know it needs to come out. However, it's probably too big for just a single surgeon like myself to take out. Your thyroid is probably going to need a whole surgical team or a surgeon with assistance, and uh, we're gonna have to refer you to someone else, someone in Tampa, which that was a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping that I could get there and get on some sort of schedule to get my thyroid removed, but I do appreciate the fact that the ear, nose, and throat doctor said this is more than what 
what you know I normally do, and so let's go somewhere else. But it was cool at the same time. She was able to stick a camera down my nose, which was a weird sensation. She was able to check my vocal cords to make sure that whatever pressure my thyroid was putting on me wasn't really injuring my vocal cords, at least from what she could see and they look good. This is my biggest concern. As the thyroid continues to grow, it, there are risks that it attaches to other things that it can impact things like your speaking voice. And if you, you know, if you've been around for a while, you know, this is, this is how I, this is how I get my bag, uh, you know, the, by speaking. And so I'm very concerned that whatever surgery I have to have will impact my ability to speak. And she said speaking should be okay, but some of these big invasive thyroids have impacted people's ability to sing. Stop applauding. I know there's some people applauding out there, but I would be very sad if I couldn't sing. But she said, don't worry about it. Let's go talk to the team in Tampa. So we came home and made an appointment. The other disappointing thing about this is I can't get an appointment with that team until mid-December. I was kind of, I don't have anything planned for November. I was hoping I would get on a schedule somewhere to get this thing cut out in November, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. So overall, I think a good visit. I have an appointment to go back to get my hearing checked. Probably gonna do a full panel on my sinuses for allergies. When she had the camera up there, she was like, wow, you're really inflamed. Whatever's happening to you and your sinuses in Florida, it looks rough in your nose and your sinus cavity. So. Uh, yeah, I get, you know, I don't usually go to the doctor and this, you know, I guess this is part and parcel that you start to find out a lot of stuff about yourself and maybe you end up in a better condition. That's what I'm hoping. That's, I think that's the goal. All right. Uh, what's next day tomorrow? I go to the cardiologist to make sure that everything's okay with the old. And we're just a few weeks away from becoming the monsters of the Lido. Uh, can you see the back of this one? I need to get some red glasses like I put on that mummy, but yeah, that's it's Jenny B and I. Boom, that's your cruise news. I hope you feel well loved today. I hope you feel satisfied. If not, you've got a chance for sky rockets in flight. Ooh, afternoon delight. Look, I don't know what any of this means. I'm just a I'm just a babe in the woods. Would it be wrong to ask you to make sweet love to the like button on the way out? This is Tony for La Lido Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news.